Welcome to the Cerebral Edge with strength and conditioning specialist, Coach Chris. Join us for the next 30 minutes as Coach Chris shares ways to improve your health in all areas of your life. Along with his special guests, he strives to give you that cerebral edge to help make you 1% better every day. Now, here's Coach Chris. It is Saturday, Colorado Springs. It's Coach Chris, and it's time for the Cerebral Edge on Power Talk 1040. I'm just going to take a half hour here and hopefully give you the edge you need to be 1% better every day. Now, I'd like to do that with a little help from my friends, and today I have my friend Pat Marquess from NeuroAthlete back on once again. Welcome back. Hey, thanks, buddy. It's great to be here again. Uh, it's, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show talking about brain-based training and all the tools and techniques that you have that go along with that. And one real interesting technique that you've been using with your patients recently, more recently than in the past, is blood flow restrictive training, right? We've been talking about that a little bit. So tell everybody, the listeners, what that is, how you implement it, and what the benefits are. So blood flow restriction training, or BFR, Mm -hmm. is pretty interesting it's actually been around for uh, quite a long time. The name is a bit of a misnomer, like blood flow restriction, right? Right. Uh, that doesn't sound good, for, but uh, so it, it's kind of a poor, it was a poor choice, whoever thought that up years ago, but it is what it is. We're stuck with it, right? <clears throat> Sometimes it's called occlusion training, mm-hmm. also a bad term, right? Occlusion meaning to cut off, right? So, uh, but w- what it really is, is blood flow modulation, Mm-hmm. And it it is using bands on the upper arms or the upper legs. You you don't want to do it at the same time. And and those bands have some amount of pressure that is then restricting the venous return of blood. So they don't you know when when used correctly and as you're supposed to do it, mm-hmm. it doesn't restrict blood flow to the working muscles. Right. But it does restrict the venous return. And so what that does is you get a lot of the waste products and the metabolites that build up in the muscles, and it makes exercise harder, which is a good thing, because then you use much lighter loads when you're doing BFR training, and you get as good or an increased effect when you're using it. So the the general way we use... BFR then is to put bands, put the bands on. And then from a, the general guidance would be that you're using about 30% of your one rep maximum. Mm -hmm. So if you can, you know, bench press a hundred pounds, instead, you're going to be using 30 pounds and you want those lighter loads because it gets hard really fast. (laughs) Yes, it does. Yeah. Chris is intimately familiar with this. We'll talk about what we've been doing with him in a second. But um, so with the bands on, basically, you've got uh, blood flow going normally to the muscles, but the normal venous return of blood is restricted somewhat or modulated. And so you get a lot of buildup. And so you build up that lactate very quickly, right? And we we don't have to get into a big chemistry lesson, on lactate and, you know, versus lactic acid, et cetera. But I think we're all familiar with the burn when doing strenuous exercise, right? If you remember, you know, back to grade school, if you went to the school I went to and you did wall sits for a while, right? And your thighs start burning. Mm -hmm. So you're getting that burn. So you're getting this, this buildup of lactate. It cannot shuttle out the way it normally would because the venous return is limited somewhat. So you get a big burn and thus a kind of a big pump too, mm. right? Oh, when, yeah. you're, when you're using it. <laughs> oh yeah. And so then uh, what that does is a couple of interesting things. The first one is that it, it you have both local effects in the muscle and then you have more systemic body wide effects in the muscle. You are basically recruiting fast twitch muscle fibers sooner. So we all have slow twitch muscle fibers, which uh, don't, you know, don't contract with a lot of power, but they can contract over and over and over. That's what we're using when we're walking, right? Mm -hmm. Then we all also have fast twitch muscle fibers that contract with a lot of power quickly, but can't do it 
for very long, right? So think of the difference on what a Olympic marathoner looks like, a lot of slow twitch muscle fibers, an Olympic level sprinter looks like who has a lot of fast twitch muscle fibers. Olympic level sprinters look like bodybuilders these days, right? Even oh, their absolutely. upper body. Absolutely. Yeah. Look at Ben Johnson. Right. Dude is shredded to the bone. Yeah. Huge, right? Uh, a lot of mu- muscle. And, and that muscle is for power, right? For the, for the sprints, as opposed to the marathon. So we all have a mixture of that that's different, right? And every muscle group actually can have a different mixture of it. But when you're using BFR, you are blowing through basically those slow twitch muscle fibers and very quickly getting to those fast twitch muscle fibers, which are then getting exhausted, which normally takes, as you're familiar as a power lifter, very heavy loads right. to access those fast twitch muscle fibers which you need to strain those in order to really gain lots of strength and muscle, Mm -hmm. right? So also at the local level, there's more protein synthesis going on, which is required for muscle building. Um, And then the... Uh, the, the last thing I really talk about with, with local tissue aspects is that your lactate tolerance improves, okay. right? So your ability to continue doing hard work for longer periods of time, mm-hmm. right? So, uh, you know, CrossFitters would be an example of somebody, you know, someone who does CrossFit on how, how they need a high level of lactate tolerance, right? Mm-hmm. So then the systemic benefits, kind of the more b- body-wide go- benefits are first, the big one's uh, hormone production. So when you have repeated bouts of exposure to lactate, right, you're creating that lactate through repeated bouts of exercise, the brain starts to recognize that. And it, it, it's it's always going to adjust to what's happening in your body. So when you're having these, these high lactate bouts with a lot of burn and and you're making things very physically difficult, it's going to start to increase production of like growth hormone, um, uh, IGF one insulin, uh, insulin growth factor one, right. As well as, uh, testosterone and several other things that are basically good for us, right. That Mm -hmm. that we want good for men and women. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, it also, then the brain goes, well, I need to decrease, decrease cortisol, which is a stress hormone. Mm -hmm. So what's really cool about that is we, you know, we're, we're both very brain-based kind of guys and trainers, right? Right. And so, you know, things like anxiety levels and stuff like that can reduce and be improved. Uh, I mean, just exercise alone does that. Right. But the blood flow restriction training tends to do it even more. And and when you have lower cortisol and, and higher of the, uh, uh, the growth hormone and testosterone and things like that, you tend to sleep better as well. I think we could Sleep like a baby after I do those workouts. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think we all all want that, right? Um, and then the other really cool systemic effect is vascular elasticity, an improvement of vascular elasticity, right? Interesting. So your 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 um, your the the capillaries, the veins, your arteries are improving their elasticity, which is a good thing. Helps reduce uh, you know high blood pressure. Um, or better modulation of that and a better efficiency of blood circulation. So it can, it's really good for, for that as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, just thinking about going back to the brain based training, as we've talked about before, your brain has maps your body, right? Yes. When you have those bands on, you are getting really aware of where your body is, right? Oh Yeah. So, and the muscles that are working. And yeah. the muscles that are working. <laughs> yeah. So it really gives your brain a better map of your body as well of where you are in space and time a little bit. Would you agree with that? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so your your proprioception, your self-sense and things like that become uh, heightened because of the uh, the uh, everything that's going on that we just talked about mm-hmm. with that muscle tissue that you're working, whether, you know, you're doing lower body, upper body or whatever. You're Mm going to get a better map of that area because of the level of attention, in a sense, that's being drawn there Mm -hmm. from your brain. Yeah. And and in regards to getting to type two muscle fiber type or type two X, actually muscle fiber type, right? So as Pat was talking about, um, in order to access those 
mostly you have to do pretty heavy weight or you have to do really fast work, right? Yes. So like uh, things like box jumps or sprinting, those those will hit your type 2X. What's really interesting with these is that you can take somebody, in a sense, who's had maybe, maybe they're more prone to injury and use these bands and access those muscle fibers. Yes, right? exactly. Which is which is great, right? So it can be used by anybody, mm-hmm. and I have a whole range of of clients, both on ability um, and age, that I use these bands on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so it can be used by anybody, and just like you said, you get to access things that you would not normally be able to do without, like really heavy loads or really explosive movements, which not everybody's suited for. Right. So. Some people that just comes to my mind that would that would greatly benefit is like the older adult. Yes. Right. So yep. to be able to take them and strain them in a safe way. Right. And you know that that brings up a uh, a, a cool study that was done a number of years ago. We didn't really get into like who invented this type of training and stuff <laughs> like that. It was a guy named Doctor Sato, right? Mm-hmm. And in, in Japan. Uh, actually, late sixties, early seventies is when he started doing it. He was a personally, he was a bodybuilder, mm-hmm. right? Uh, then before he became a doctor, mm-hmm. and so he was always you know seeking the pump and stuff <laughs> like that. And I won't go into the whole story, but he you know kind of stumbled upon this and then experimented on himself for a number of years, and then got into. Um, uh, how to do it uh, safely with lots of different people and things like that, using inflatable bands. And and his the they're the original ones. They're called Katsu K A A T S U, which mm-hmm. is basically Japanese for additional pressure. Right, <laughs> right. Nothing complicated there. <laughs> uh, those, those are great bands. That's what we use in the clinic because they've got they've got some proprietary stuff on them on how they fill and things like that. That's different than uh, other brands basically mm-hmm. and uh, super safe and great to use but one of the interesting studies is they took elderly uh, patients they put the leg bands on and had them walk for 10 minutes a day with the leg bands on only walking interesting and they measured increases in hypertrophy or growth in the leg musculature just from walking with the bands on 10 minutes a day right and and I wonder how much if they would have did a cognition test if their cognition would have went up as well because of increased activation. Uh, yeah, you know it's very it's very possible, right? Right. Because as your you, you know your your motor maps, right, which mm-hmm. are in in the, in the front brain, which is where a lot of uh, you know aspects of what we think of cognition mm-hmm. and things like that in the front brain are getting activated more. So if they very well could have. Great. We're on here with Coach Pat Marquez talking about blood flow restricted training. We come back, we're going to get some more topics and tips about that. But really great info that I think is going to help us all out. So we'll be back here in just a minute. This is the Cerebral Edge with Coach Chris on Power Talk 1040. We are back on KPPF Power Talk 1040. This is a Cerebral Edge with Coach Chris. I'm back here with my uh, friend, Coach Pat Marquess, and we are talking about blood flow restrictive training, all the great things that does come out of it. We've talked about how you can use lighter loads to build muscle, use lighter loads to get stronger, help your hormone production. And now we're going to go into how to implement it into your everyday. So, Pat, say I bought these bands. I bought these BFR bands. How do I use those at home? So there's a a couple typical protocols that are often used as far as Mm -hmm. like reps and sets. The the first one, kind of the original one, and you'll often see this used, and we can talk a little about this a little bit more uh, in physical therapy clinics, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's used quite a bit for uh, injury recovery Mm -hmm. and post-surgical rehabilitation. So the, one of the standard protocols is a four set protocol, right? So Mm -hmm. say I'm doing, uh, uh, something like squats or leg press, Mm -hmm. got the bands on and I've got, I'm at about 30% of what my one rep max is, is the weight I'm using. And the first set, I'm going to do about 30 reps. 
And then the rest before the second set is only 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. And then the second, third, and fourth sets are all about 15 repetitions with only 30 seconds rest in between, right? So it builds up quick. That builds builds up a lot of lactate really fast. Right. (laughs) Yes, it does. And... um, but like what we've been doing with you, right? right. And what I I use with uh, several clients is a, a somewhat simpler uh, protocol. But it I like it because it is it's it's easier to uh, adjust for um, uh, changing the load when you need to and things like that. Mm-hmm. And that protocol would be you're going to do three sets. The first set is your your goal is to get between twenty five and forty reps. Mm-hmm. So with blood flow restriction training, when you're dealing now, not necessarily with uh, like um, injury recovery or rehab, but for your clients who are trying to build strength and, and build muscle, you're going to failure on these sets in good form, right? So you're going to failure in good form, last good rep you can get. So let's say you get about 30 reps in that first set, right? You're trying to get again between 25 and 40. Then you're resting for 30 seconds. In the second set, your goal is to get between 10 and 20 repetitions. Then again, a 30-second rest, and then between 5 and 10 for the last set. I have found that when you have the load really dialed in correctly, your, your rep count goes down by about half. Dramatically. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> every time. So if you got about 30 in the first set, you're probably going to get about 15 on the second set. You're probably going to get 7 or 8. Rep, reps on the third set, mm-hmm. right? And that's when you know the 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 weights is really dialed in correctly. The amount of resistance, whatever you're using, machine cables, uh, you know, t- uh, a TRX, a, a suspension trainer, mm-hmm. or body weight exercises, you're you know you're dialed in pretty well. Once mm-hmm. you can, I have people increase their load by a very small amount. Right. Once you can get 40 reps on that first set, because a very small increase in load equals a huge drop in your number of reps that mm-hmm. next time you, you do that, as you are. Don't familiar. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so um, so th- this is another reason these bands are, are great for like working out at home, too, or traveling. Right. Because you don't really need a lot or any equipment. You know, I've got, I built a, a, like a travel, like a hotel room workout for a client, uh, the other day, mm-hmm. in fact, and he, he was doing, um, like body weight squats mm-hmm. for, uh, the, uh, for lower body for one, one exercise doing the three sets and then going into, uh, like different names, you know, a floor hip bridge or hip thruster. Yep. Right. Uh, for kind or of glute bridge, if, glute bridge. Yeah, yep. Yeah. For posterior chain. Yeah. And then a couple of exercises for the upper body, like, you know, push ups. even mm-hmm. though a lot of times people need to do that, uh, you know, with their, their hands elevated a little bit, mm-hmm. you know, like a stairs are great for this, right? right? You could have your hands about three or four stairs up and your feet on the floor. And then as you improve, you just go down a step and down a step. Right. right. It's like, it's like adding load to a barbell. Right? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's just decreasing that load a little bit by changing your body angle. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, into some back work with, you know, if you've got uh, uh, like bands, it's super mm-hmm. easy to do some uh, uh, like bent over rows. Yeah. Type things. Um, uh, or even, you know, on a, in a doorway, you can, you can kind of do rows, you know, and just squat down to about a 90, 90 and you're holding onto the door frame mm-hmm. and pulling yourself pulling yourself up. Sounds miserable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, even just with body weight using these bands, say, you know, 25, 40 reps gets easy. Just add that tempo in there and that changes the game up. Right. And, right? and if you, if you really ensure your reps are super clean, right. So, um, if you're maintaining, you know, even a, a two, two kind of, you know, two seconds up, two seconds mm-hmm. down, but not stopping at the top or at the bottom. And you, in that continual movement, mm-hmm. th- that really increases things too the, on the difficulty. So, you know, keeping those reps super clean makes it very hard. Yeah. Th- very I mean, fast. I mean, the amount of definition that I've added to my legs and size that I've added to my legs just by implementing this one time a day, and I do it with Pat, um, has... Uh, it's better than when I was powerlifting five days a week, two and a half hours a day. 
Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just because the, the the effects for that that one workout we're doing in the week with, with that, mm-hmm. right, with those bands, it's just you know it's really intense, and mm-hmm. you're putting a lot of effort into it, right? Oh yes. <laughs> and it's, so. it's really intense, and so it's driving all those things we've talked about, both at the local level and systemically. Yeah. That are are in, you know made a huge increase in your your hypertrophy and mm-hmm. muscle size in your in your legs, and your it, what's interesting is I, I thought I thought this was really cool because you as a power lifter, right? Right. Have done a lot of squats, mm-hmm. but mostly they're very heavy and you know five sets of five and, and right. that kind of thing. And then when you get into these sets where you you're usually using a light load <laughs> because you got the bands and you're doing 25, 30, 35, 40 repetitions, your squat form has actually exponentially improved. Yeah, and it was already good. Mm-hmm. You know, it is so clean now. Mm-hmm. And and there's and the strange thing that I noticed when I started doing it is my knee pain has significantly gone down as well. Yeah. Because yeah. I was to the point where I was getting some pretty significant patellar tendonitis. Right. We had to do a lot of things to get around that. We were trying yeah. uh, the, the K-Box, which is a, a different system altogether. But the one that helped me the most is the BFR, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Why is that? So uh, there, there's a couple reasons there. One, you have uh, it, you're getting a tremendous amount of blood flow. You're obviously getting blood flow to muscles and joints in, in areas when you're doing any kind of exercise, mm-hmm. but it's increasing a lot when you're using BFR bands, right? Mm-hmm. So the just from a fluid dynamics standpoint, right, you're getting more blood flow to the tissue and things like that. What's also interesting is because of that increased blood flow, though. You're getting more oxygen to those tissues, and not just the, the muscles, but all of your soft tissue, right? Mm-hmm. And usually, areas that have pain are a little bit hypoxic, right? They don't have as much oxygen there, and mm-hmm. so th- this is this is something that has been researched a little bit. I haven't found a huge amount, I, um, and so it's a bit of a hypothesis on my part, right? <laughs> right? But I found the same thing with my hip. I had some hip pain and the, and I've done a lot of things over the last year and some things have improved it little by little, but the biggest improvement I've had to my hip pain is after I started doing the, the, the BFR really consistently, mm-hmm. right? And focused on things where I'm doing a lot of hip movement. Mm-hmm. I've got the same thing with a client who has a lot of, um, uh, Different pain, shoulders are the worst, one shoulder being particularly bad, can't reach overhead and that kind of thing. Yep. <laughs> and it has, uh, and we've been doing twice a week and she's had, we've had some of the best improvements we've had in a, a long, long time. Wow. That's great. So if people want to get some of these bands, where do they find them at? So there's uh, many different versions mm-hmm. uh, out there. Uh there are uh, what are literally called BFR bands, <laughs> right. right? And and they are like elastic, kind of like if you think of a knee wrap, mm-hmm. a similar elastic kind of thing there with buckles. And then uh, you can set them to a you know whatever tightness you need, which we should talk about in a second on the mm-hmm. tightness, how to make sure you have them on right and mm-hmm. use them right. Um, but then... Also, uh, the Katsu, which are, are significantly more expensive. Right. But the Lamborghinis. They of- are the Lamborghini of, of BFR, <laughs> of BFR. Yeah, BFR. For, for sure. Uh, you look at uh, katsuglobal.com uh-huh. for there. And then there are uh, some other brands called Smart Cuffs and Be Strong. And they, you fill up with a pneumatic pump that you hand mm-hmm. pump them up. Um, mm-hmm. And so there's some different, and they range in price from, you know, the BFR bands are really low the the ones that are just the elastic straps you know around 30 bucks for a pair that kind of thing up to you know several hundred (laughs) depending on the the capabilities you you want for them Mm -hmm. but real quick let's let's definitely talk about for folks how to put the bands on okay we good yep so you want it you you want the bands to be tight but not too tight so think of out of 10. 10 out of 10 means it feels like it's going to squeeze your arm off, right? Mm-hmm. So you want about a six, six, out of, 6 to 7 out of 10. Mm-hmm. How do you know that it's not too tight? You check the blood flow in your palm. You press into your palm with your thumb, release. You'll see a, a white spot, right? right? And then you'll get that, that the capillary refill, mm-hmm. right? It should refill in about three seconds. Okay. If it takes three longer seconds. than that, they are too tight. All right. 
If your fingers are tingling, they're too tight. <laughs> if your arms are blue or cold, they're too tight. Right. right? You, your arms will discolor and get a little reddish, though, because mm-hmm. they have more blood flow in there. And with the legs, you do the same thing. You press in uh, uh, on the lower quad right above the kneecap and mm-hmm. check that capillary refill. Right. And then you, kn- you know that you're as long as you have that refill within three seconds, you know you don't have the bands on too tight. Perfect. You know, it's, it's a great thing that you can add in to the end of your workout. So work out all by yourself. Pat, how do people get a hold of you? Well, you can find us at, at uh, Neuro Athlete Cairo, N-E-U-R-O-A-T-H-L-E-T-E-C-H-I-R-O.com. And check us out there. And we've also on uh, Instagram, uh, Neuro Athlete Clinic on Instagram and on Facebook. All right. Well, I'm so glad you joined me today here on the Cerebral Edge. Join me next Saturday at noon right here on Power Talk 1040. And I have another guest with more insight in how we can all achieve that Cerebral Edge goal, making you 1% better every day. I'm Coach Chris. He's Coach Pat. Until next time, stay strong. Thanks, guys. This has been the Cerebral Edge on KPPF. Have a question for Coach Chris? Email him at CerebralEdge1 at gmail.com. That's CerebralEdge, the number one, at gmail.com. Join us next Saturday at noon for another episode of the Cerebral Edge with Coach Chris on Power Talk 1040 KPPF.